Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and today I would like to show you how you can use list objects effectively in Python. Now, for this tutorial I will use Python 3.4 as you can see here, but all the tricks that I will, uh, will show you are equally applicable to Python 2.7 or any other recent version of uh, Python. Now, to start with the, the basics, what is a list? Well, a list in Python is just a collection of elements. And elements can be anything. So, you can have, for example, a list of numbers, as you see here. Or you can have a list of strings, right? As you can see here, list 2. And you can even have a list of other lists, as you can see here, right? So, any kind of Python object can be put together into a list. A list is just a collection of arbitrary elements. Uh, a list has a particular order, right? So if we take a look at list 1, you see that the 0 comes before the 1 and the 1 comes before the 2. And lists can be changed, or as they, they say in Python, lists are mutable. Which means that you can change one element from a list, for example the 1, by another element, for example the 3. right? Now, so that's, that's a list. A list is an, a collection of elements, and these elements can be anything. A list has a particular order, and a list can be changed. That's what a list is in Python. Now, um, let's say that we have a list like this, a list of names in this case, so a list of string objects. How can we access elements from this list? Well, that's very easy. Say that we want to access one element, and this is really elementary Python now, you probably know this. You just say, for example, print names zero, and if I select this and I run it, you see that it will print the first name, Joe, to the terminal, right? So at position 0, we start counting at 0, so element 0 is Joe, and you get it from this list just using this square bracket notation. Um, but you can do more. You can also uh, select an entire range, or as you call it in Python, a slice from a list. Say, for example, that I type this, print names 0 to 3. I select this, and I run it. You see, it will print out Joe, Jean, and Marcel to the, to the, to the terminal. So it will print out from 0 to 1 and 2. And it will stop at, at position 3, right? So the 3 is the last, actually the first item that is no longer part of the range. Uh, well, we can even make more complicated uh, slices. Say, now basically what we're doing is we're making steps of 1, right? We're going from Joe at position 0 to Jean at position 1 to Marcel at position uh, 2. Say that we want to make steps of 2, then we just add another column and we say 2. So if I select this and I run it, you will see we go from Joe at position 0, and we, then we make a step of 2 and we go right to Marcel at position 2. So a slice can have a starting point, 0, an end point, 3 in this case, and a step size, 2 in this case. Now, uh, so far, we've been counting from the start, right? So the first element is element 0. But we can also count from the back. We can say, for example, uh, print names minus 1. And minus 1 is the last element. So we start counting from the back. So if I run this, you see it prints out Eric, which is the last item, right? So minus 1 is the last item. Minus 2 is the second to last item, and so on, right? So if we want to count from the, from the end of the list, we just do this with negative numbers. Now we can even make negative slices in the following way. Say that we want to go print names from the last item to the four before last items, right? Item at position number five. So this would be number one. Marcel would be number two. Jean would be number minus three. Joe would be number minus four. And number minus five would be like just before the list and then we do this in steps of minus one so you see what's going on here we start at the end of the list and then with steps of minus one so backward steps of one we go all the way to the beginning of the list so if i select this and i run it you will see that it prints out the list in reverse order now what you will often see in python is that people do this they say names and then they do column column minus one and this magically reverses the list. So if I run this, you see it does the same thing. It prints out the list in reverse order. Now, this works because if we do not indicate the start and the end of a slice, right? So we don't do this here. We just put a colon and we just completely omit the start and the end of the slice. 
Python will automatically use the beginning and the end of the slice, which is why this statement here, minus 5 to, from minus 1 to minus 5 in steps of minus 1, is, the, is identical to just saying, uh, take a slice with steps of minus 1, right? So colon, colon, minus 1 is just a quick way, convenient way of inverting a list uh, with a slice. But technically, what it does is walk through the list with steps of minus 1. Okay, so now you, now you know, essentially all there is to know about how you can access uh, elements and slices from a list. Now, let's go to sorting, right? So because, as I mentioned, lists have a particular order, right? In this case, Joe is the first, John is the second, Marcel and Eric. And often, of course, you will want to sort lists, right? And you can do this very simply. Say that we want to print a sorted version of this list. We just say print sorted names. If I select this and I run it, up, you see it works. It starts with by Eric, which is the first because it starts with an E and we sort automatic, uh, alphabetically by default. And then Jean, then Joe, and then Marcel. Now, if you do it, if you do this, do it like this using the sorted function, you do not change the original list, right? So if I would print out the, the original function afterward, print names it would still not be sorted, right? So you could say sorted creates a new list that is a sorted variation of the original list, but it doesn't change the original list. If you do want to change the original list, you can do this with the dot sort function. You say names dot sort. And if I do this, I select this, you will see that actually the original list has changed and has become alphabetical, right? So there are basically two, two common ways of sorting a list using the sorted function, in which case you pass the, the list as an argument, or you call the dot sort function on a list, in which case you change the, the actual list itself. Okay, now, so that, that, that's the basic sort way to sort lists in Python. But now let's say that we want to do something more complicated. We want to sort the list in a custom way, so not alphabetically, but using some kind of custom criteria. Say, for example, that we want to sort this list by the last letter of the name. Uh, then we can do this using a trick, namely specifying a key to do the sorting. Now, if you specify a key like this using the key keyword, you have to indicate a function. So let's say last letter. And then we have to define this function, def last letter name return name minus one right so we define a function that returns the last letter of a name and then we use this last letter to do the sorting by that's what happens here now and if i select this and i run it up, you see that it works right we start again with eric because it starts the c comes first then the e then the l and then the n so this works but we can do it a little bit more elegantly uh, using a so-called lambda function. Now, a lambda function works like this. We can say names.sort key is, I will just show it and then explain it. Key is lambda name name minus one. Okay, now these two things here is by explicitly defining a last letter function and this way, using a lambda function, do exactly the same. What this lambda function is, basically it is a way to specify in one line a very simple function that has no name, but it takes, uh, it has no function name, but it takes a name as an argument and it returns the last letter of this name. So that's what it does. With a lambda statement, you can create a function just uh, in a, in a very quick way, just on one line, right? So here you define a function that takes a name as an argument and returns the last letter of this name. And then we're going to use this to do the sorting. So if I select this and I run it, you see that it works, right? And these Lambda functions are very convenient, especially in combination with lists. And we will see it a few times more in this uh, tutorial. Okay. So now you know the basic ways of sorting, uh, sorting a list. Let's move on to, uh, to a very convenient function, the map function. Now, to explain what map does, let's start with this very simple scenario in which we have the same list of names. 
and we want to create a new list in which which has the same names in it but the first letter of each name is capitalized now we can do this like this right we can create a new names list then we walk through all names in the list then we capitalize each name right and dot capitalize is just a built-in uh, function of strings that capitalizes the first letter of a string and then we add this to our new names function and then we print it out now if i select this and i run it you will see that it works oh, sorry print name select run you see that it works right oh, no. <laughs> there we go up oh, you see that it works joe jean marcel eric all right uh, so and you will see that the first letter is capitalized but we can do this uh, we can do this in a more elegant way using the map function what we can do I will just type it and then explain how it works we say new names is map and then we specify a function that uh, is applied to every element from the list and to do this we're going to use again a lambda function lambda name name dot capitalize comma names we can remove this oh. new names now if i select this and i run it you see that it does exactly the same thing right it prints out all the names with capitalized first letters now what happens here is that basically we have specified a function again a lambda function that accepts one name as an argument and returns that name with the first letter capitalized. Then we use the map function to apply this lambda function to every element from the names list and we store the result in new names. Right? So map is a very convenient function that applies another function to every element from a list. So it, it, it basically it's a, it's, a, it's a more elegant way to do what many people would do using a kind of for loop uh, as I showed you before. So that's what you can use map for. Now let's move on to another function, the filter function, which is, is in a way quite comparable to map. So let's explain what, you, what the filter function does by, the, by considering the following scenario, in which we again have a list of names. And what we want to do is from this list, we want to select only the names that start with the letter J. Now, uh, so we create a new empty list, we walk through all the uh, names in the original names list. If the name starts with the letter J, we append it to the new names list. And then we print it out, right? Fix this again. So, now, and if I select this and I run it, you see that it works, right? It prints out only Joe and Jean, because those are the two names that will start with J. But we can do this in a way that's more elegant using the filter function, which, as the name suggests, is used to filter a list, right? And what we're essentially doing here is filtering this list. Now, filter works as follows. Let's say we remove all this, and we just say new names is filter. And then as the first argument, we specify a function that should return true if an element should be included and return false if the element should not be included, right? So it's a function that determines what we're going to how we're going to filter the list. So we say lambda name name dot starts oops, starts with j comma names. Now, if I select this and I run it, you will see that it works. It, it again prints out Joe and Jean. So what happens here is basically we specify a function that accepts a name as an argument and returns true if uh, the name starts with the J and false if it doesn't start with the J. Now this function is used to evaluate every name from the names list and the filter function uses this to select only those names that start with the J and stores the result in this new filter, in this new list, right? So filter is a very convenient function that you can use to select a subset of elements from a list using some kind of uh, criterion. And again, you, uh, using a lambda function in combination with filter is very convenient, just like using a lambda function in combination with map was very convenient. Okay. Now, let's move on to the next, uh, next trick. And that's actually a very, uh, very cool trick. And it's called list comprehensions. 
And it's a bit it's a bit abstract, but if you get the hang of it, it's really very convenient. So let's to to explain what what it does. Let's consider the following scenario, which is actually a combination of the two previous scenarios. So what we want is we want to create a new list based on the original names list in which all first letters are capitalized. But we only want to select those names that start with J. Now, then we can do this in the following way with a for loop, right? We can say new names is an empty list, we walk through all names. If a name starts with the letter J, we capitalize it and we append it to the new names list. And then if we print it out now, so again, I have to fix this. I select it and I run it. Oh, name, select, run. You see that it works. We print out Joe and Jean, both with capitalized first letters. But we can do this in a, in a more elegant way using a list comprehension, and that works as follows. What we do is basically we remove this and we say, okay, we want to capitalize each name. Capitalize each name. And what is name? Well, name is for name in names. And this is already a valid, uh, a valid uh, uh, list comprehension. So basically, we specify a for loop as part of this weird notation, and on each element of the for loop, we, we apply the, to each element of the for loop, we apply the capitalize function. Now, if I select this and I run it, you see that it works, right? It capitalizes each, uh, each first letter of the name. But then, we can also specify an if statement. So we can say if name dot starts with j. If I select this and I run it, oh, you will see it prints out only the Joe and Jean and capitalizes the first letter. So a list comprehension is basically a clever way to walk through a list for name in names. Select only those elements that satisfy some criterion, if name dot starts with J, and then apply some kind of operation to the elements that are selected. In this case, name dot capitalize. And you can do this with this particular notation that you see here. So you do it between square brackets, you indicate the operation, then the for loop, and then if you want, this is optional, you specify an if statement. And list comprehensions are a very, very concise, very short way to work with lists. Um, okay. Okay, so let's move on to the, to the next function, the zip function which is really very convenient, uh, really very convenient function. Now, uh, let's say, to, to explain what zip does, let's, let's say that we have two lists, one list of names and one list of associated birth years, right? So, Joe is born in 1980, uh, John's born in 1972, and so on. And what we want to do is print out for each name when that person was born. So we can do that again, as always, we can do that with the for loop, right? So we see how many names there are, which is four. Then we create a range from that, right? So it would be a range from 0, 1, 2, and 2, 3, and including 3. We loop through that range, and then we print out, first we print out name name 0, and birth year 0, then name 1, and birth year 1, etc. Now, if I select this and I run it, you will see that it works. It says Joe was born in 1980, Jean born in 1972, etc. But it's quite ugly, right? Because we have this weird construction in which we have a length nested within a range, which is quite ugly. So we can actually do this in a better way using a uh, zip function. And what we do is very simply, we do the following. We say, uh, instead of four i in range length names, we say four name comma, birth year in zip names comma, birth years. And we remove this. Up. And then, we print out name and birth year. Oh, put a column here. Now, if I select this and I run it, you will see that it does exactly the same thing. So basically what zip does is simply it creates a, it zips together the names and the birth year lists, and it returns first a tuple consisting of the first name and the first birth year, then a tuple consisting of the second name and the second birth year, and so on. So zip is a very convenient function to zip together lists if you have separate lists of elements that are really associated 
by the position of the elements in the list, right? Which is the case here, because the elements here are associated by their position in the list. So zip is really a very convenient function to use and remember. Okay, now let's move on to the final function, enumerate. Uh, enumerate is again one of those functions that solves a problem that you see very, very often. Let's say that we have a list the same names, uh, same name list as, as always. And what we want to do is we want to print out for each name the position of that name in the list. Now we can do this as follows, right? We start with a counter variable i, which is zero. Then we loop through, through every name. We print out the name and i, right? And then we increment i by one. I select this and I run it. You see that it works, it prints out zero is Joe, one is Jean, etc. But we can do this better using the enumerate function, which goes like this. We simply say for i comma name in enumerate names. And then if I select this and I run it, you see it does the same thing, but it has saved us two lines. So basically what enumerate does, it returns a tuple of the position of each element and the element itself, itself, right? So i would be the, the position of the element and name would be the element itself. So that's very, in, in, in a lot of cases, enumerate saves you uh, from having to use kind of counter variables to keep track of where you are in a list. Okay, well, that's basically uh, all I wanted to say. So what we have seen today is that a list is a collection of arbitrary elements that has a particular order and it is mutable, a list can be changed. You can slice through a list by, uh, get it, you can get elements from a list by number, either positive numbers starting from the beginning or negative numbers starting for the, from, the, from the back. And you can get slices from, the, from a list using a start position and the end position and a step size. You can sort lists using the sorted function or the dot sort function. And for custom sorting, uh, you can use a, you can specify a sort key, which has to be a function. We've seen that there is a map function, which applies one particular function, which is usually a lambda function, to each and every element from a list. We have seen that there is a filter function, which selects elements from a list based by the result from some kind of filtering function, which is usually also a lambda function. We have seen that you can use list comprehensions to apply an operation to every element from a list, optionally selecting only elements that satisfy some kind of criterion. We've see, seen that zip allows you to zip multiple lists together. And we've seen that enumerate allows you to walk through a list while at the same time getting the position of each element in that list. Okay, thank you very much.